Conrad Smith, All Black number 1044. This is my origin story. We were born in Hawara, um, but we didn't spend long there. I'd only just started primary school and then and then we moved up to New Plymouth, which is sort of where I, you know, identify most of my childhood and, and moved into a house in, on Pembroke Street. When you go into New Plymouth, you have to be going to New Plymouth. It's pretty remote, so it's not, it's not really on the way to anywhere. We pride ourselves that we've got great beaches and we've got the mountain. You can be up the mountain and, and surfing on the same day. I don't know if anyone actually does that, but that's what we say. It used to always catch me by surprise if you met someone of the same age, and if they were from Taranaki and, and you were, you'd pretty quickly work out someone that you both knew and how you both knew each other. And it would be down to, I reckon, two, three questions before you worked out uh, who they were and who you both knew. You know, when I think of my childhood in New Plymouth, it, it's sort of, uh, revolves around sport and then sort of hanging out with a good bunch of uh, schoolmates and that's sort of how I occupied um, my time. Obviously went to school and did some school work in between all that. The main thing I remember is right across the road from Rugby Park um, as we knew it. So we didn't have much of a section in, in our house which I know my mum and dad were like oh they got four kids, three boys, we needed a section but they knew Rugby Park was uh, <clears throat> just across the street. And, and that was really our, our backyard growing up. You know, if we had any spare time, you know, I'd off over the street, jump a fence, and I was in uh, the back park of, of, of Rugby Park and kicking the ball rounds um, in the winter or hitting tennis balls around with a cricket bat with my brothers, you know, in, in the summer. And definitely, like, the value within our family was just spending, you know, a lot of time together. My dad was a policeman, but he, he worked around the family, so he was, a, he was a youth aid officer and he loved that role because it allowed him to spend weekends with us. He wasn't um, walking the beat, you know, he, di he did that, he did his shift, but then it was, um, he loved the youth aid side because he helped troubled kids, which was something important to him. I'm very fortunate to have known um, Conrad's mum and dad very well. Um, when I was coaching, Trevor and Marion would always, you know, help out with putting the pads out and that sort of, they were always there. And not just for rugby, but for all the sports that all their family uh, were involved with. They, they get involved and they're just very nice people who um, wanted their children to do the very best as well. You know, I went to um, Francis Douglas, a small Catholic boys' school, I came in, the, the role was only a bit, just so, you know, 330, 340. But, you know, coming into high school, I, I just, I didn't grow from about the age of 12 to 17. And, and I, so I, I got a younger sister and she was the same height as me and there was real friction in the household. Um, Cause I did not like that. And, you know, and it shapes when you're little, you know, <laughs> restricts your ability to, especially with sports. Honestly, um, 750 boys at school now, he, he's no different to them. Just a regular, good college man doing his thing, involved in a whole variety of different activities. He was one of the keenest guys that I've ever come across with a spark for virtually everything. And I'm not just talking sport, I'm talking about debating, speech making, uh, who had the tidiest book, everything. Going to school here, there, it wasn't a focus on rugby at all. Like it wasn't like, oh, I have to be a an All Black. I, I loved all sports. I played basketball here in this gym. Played a lot of, of cricket and rugby. I, I was just small, so I didn't, you know, excel particularly at, at rugby. And uh, cricket was the sport I actually played more, you know, representative. And you would say, you know, if you look at him, you'd say, well, he'd probably more likely end up being a cricket player. I'm biased, but a great school, a great community. You know, I think over that time we had a, a r amazing teaching staff and you always tell that because how long the teachers want to stay on because they enjoy it. And I mean, there's teachers even now that still the teachers that I had, which is, uh, you know, not, not always the case. And it's, it's normally, you know, means it's pretty special when, when people want to stay involved for that long. And, you know, we, we were a good first 15. We were a group that was starting to develop and, and I suppose we were getting a little bit probably better than where our predecessor first 15s were. And so a, a real um, advancement for us was as, as a first 15 was that we started to play 
the New Plymouth Boys High, first 15. Obviously, like all uh, provinces, there's a pecking order in terms of schools, in particular uh, rugby, um, and Boys High was always the team, New Plymouth Boys High School, always the team that we wanted to compete against. Thinking about him back in those days, when he was playing sport, um, he'd probably chew his uh, left arm off just to make sure he uh, won. It, it led itself to, to the fact that when I was in my last year, we beat New Plymouth Boys High, first 15. On August the 18th, 1999, 15-3, we won that game. At, at that time, I would have retired from rugby, you know, a happy man, I'd done everything <laughs> I'd aspired to, to do. It was, uh, it was a pretty cool achievement on the sporting field or in the classroom, you know, we were competitive and we were pushing each other for great things and, and that was a, a little goal that we wanted to, to achieve and, and beat that, you know, beat our rival school for the first time in history. He wasn't necessarily the star of that team. I, I always suspected he'd be able to go um, quite far if he put his mind to it, but the All Blacks, probably not. Um, you're never, you're never uh, sure about that anyway. I, I've got to admit, there was at least half a dozen of guys in that first 15 that I thought would go on to greater heights. But as for singling out Conrad as being right, he's, he's going to be the next All Black great or whatever like that. No, I wouldn't have picked that. I feel incredibly fortunate with my the way I came into rugby and that it wasn't from a young age that I had this single focus on rugby. I always loved rugby, but it wasn't anything more than a, a hobby, really. Rugby wasn't dominating my life, and, and other things were, and, and I think that was uh, something I really benefited from. In all honesty, I think Conrad was a gateway for our boys to go, actually, that's achievable. Um, we can do that. You know, everything's on the table. It's possible to do these things. When I was living in Halder, one of my few memories living down there was the 1987 World Cup, seeing John Kerwin particularly that, that try he scored against the French where he dived into the corner and he took out a corner flag. I would recreate that try with a, <laughs> with a post that I'd put in our lawn in Halder and, and I'd actually just dive <laughs> into the, like, score the try and take out the corner post and I'd just do that over and over. And so it was, it was, it was just a dream, I suppose, to, to, to be in All Black, but it was never a, it was never a plan. I wasn't going to define myself when I left France Douglas, I, as, as I say, I, I don't think many would have um, thought I'd go on to uh, play for the All Blacks.